literally with weeks counting down before we get to Easter, we started last week with a series about who is Jesus. We're continuing that on today. And uh, one of the most outrageous things that Jesus ever said is found in John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Pretty outrageous claim. Atheists seem to get outraged that Christians believe this. How bigoted of Christians to think that Jesus is the only way. How narrow-minded. What an outrageous thing for them to believe. I know that some of you are here today and you're, you're sort of investigating this thing called Christianity. You're checking it out. And this statement would probably puzzle you. Maybe you've been a follower of Jesus for a while and, and this statement of Jesus is something you need to develop a deeper understanding about. I believe that Jesus was telling the truth when he said it. I believe that he said it not out of arrogance, but, but out of this great compassion. I believe that the closer we study this statement, the more sense that it makes to us. I believe this sentence is one of the most important bits of information on the entire planet and for you personally. Why is it so controversial? I think it's controversial because this statement strikes at the heart of three great myths of Christianity. Myth number one, all religions are basically the same. What this myth says is that, is that when you get right down to it, when you get down to the essentials, all religions basically teach the same thing. So it doesn't matter which one you believe, just take your pick. All spiritual paths, in other words, lead up the mountain to God in one way or another. If you strip them down to their essentials, they all teach the, the brotherhood and the sisterhood of of men and women and, and the fatherhood of God. With this one outlandish statement, Jesus Christ boldly takes Christianity and he sets it in a completely separate category. He does that with this statement. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If the only path to God is through Jesus, then the reality is this. Christianity cannot be reconciled with any other religion. Acts 4.12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there was no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. The uniqueness of Christianity is rooted in the uniqueness of Jesus Christ. He is unlike any other religious leader that ever walked the planet. I'm gonna give you some of the differences. Differences from uh, what other religious leaders said and what Jesus says. For example, other religious leaders say, follow me and I will show you how to find the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth. Other religious leaders say, follow me and I will show you the way to eternal life. Jesus says, I am the way to eternal life. Other religious leaders say, follow me, and I will show you how you can be enlightened. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Other religious leaders say, follow me, and I will show you many doors that lead to God. Jesus says, I am the door. Other religious leaders say, follow me, and I will show you how you can find spiritual nourishment. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. That's a radical difference. Some people, some people try to harmonize the different religions of the world. They try to, try to put them all into the mixer and, and blend them up and think, you know, that's okay. But there are drastic and irreconcilable differences between Christianity and all other religions. When you study religions, the world religions, what you find is that all of the other religions other than Christianity are basically based on the idea of people doing something to get to God. Somehow you have to do something to earn God's favor. You use a Tibetan prayer wheel or you go on pilgrimages or you, you give alms to the poor or you, you avoid eating certain foods or you have to pray in a certain way. 
or you have to go through a series of reincarnations. Those are all attempts of people to reach God. Jesus Christ is God's attempt to reach people. Jesus taught the opposite of what these other world religions taught. He said that nobody could earn their way to heaven. Nobody could do enough. Nobody could do that, so you just might as well stop trying. He said two things that are very consistent with our human experience. I think these are true to your human experience. First, we're all guilty of wrongdoing. No one can claim they're perfect. This resonates with all of us, with our experience. We all would say, yeah, that, that's true. I'm not perfect, I've never met a perfect person, they don't exist. Second, our wrongdoing separates us from God. We know from our experience that that is true too. Has there ever been a time in your life where you felt that God was, was distant? That God was somehow detached from you? I would say, of course, we've, we've all felt that way. Why? Because our wrongdoing has created a separation between us and God. It separates us from him because God by his nature is a righteous judge. Therefore, our wrongdoing must be paid for. It must be set right. But out of his love, but out of his love for us, Jesus Christ voluntarily offered himself as a sacrifice, as a substitute to pay the penalty for the sin that, that we deserve so that we wouldn't have to pay that price. Through Jesus, we can all be reconciled with God forever. It's a forever deal. That's Christianity. There's a huge difference between uh, works and grace. All other, all other religions are spelled D-O, do. They all teach that people have to do something to connect with God. They have to do something to please God. The problem is nobody ever knows how much they have to do to please God. It's like, it's like you're a salesperson and your boss comes to you and says, I'm gonna fire you unless you meet your quota, but I'm not gonna tell you what your quota is. And so you go out and you sell and you sell and you sell, but you never know when you have sold enough. You never know when you have met the quota. You never know how much you have to do to please God. Christianity says you can never do enough to earn your way into heaven. Christianity is spelled D-O-N-E. It's done. Jesus Christ has done what we could never do. He lived a perfect, sinless life. He went to the cross to pay for the sins of the world. And just before he died on the cross, he said, it is finished. It's done. I have paid for the sins of the world. All that is left is for you to, to receive his free gift of forgiveness, of grace, of mercy. We can all really see the distinction between the do and the done when we look at some of the stories told by the various religions. For example, there's a story in Buddhist literature that's very similar to the story that Jesus tells about the prodigal son. They both start out the same way. They start out similarly. In both stories, young men rebel. They take their inheritance and they go off to a foreign land and after a while, they've lost it all. And they come to this place where they say, I wanna go back home, I wanna be reconciled with my father. And so they go back home. Here's where the difference steps in. In the Buddhist story, the prodigal son comes home and his father forces him to pay the penalty of his past mistakes with years of servitude. In the Christian story, the prodigal son comes home and instead of forcing him to, to work off his past mistakes, he greets him, he embraces him, and he gives him unconditional love, forgiveness, and grace. That's a huge difference. It's completely different. 
The Bible says in Titus 3, 5, he saved us, not because of righteous, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Other religions are irreconcilable with Christianity in terms of how you become reconciled with God. There are other major differences as well. For example, Christianity says there is one God eternally existing in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hinduism says everything is God. You're God, I'm God, the podium's God, your chair's God. Everything is God. Islam denies that Jesus was God. Islam denies that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Buddha, he was noncommittal about the idea of God. He was kind of an agnostic. He wasn't sure if God existed or not. You could see those, uh, those beliefs are at odds with each other. They can't all be true at the same time. They don't mesh. All religions are not basically the same. It matters which path you choose for your spiritual journey. Jesus dispels this myth, the myth that all paths lead to God. They don't. Only Jesus does. Myth number two, all religions have equal claims on the truth. Some would say, e even if there is some differences, they, they all have equal claims on the truth. You have your truth, I have my truth. You know, this has a certain appeal. It has a certain appeal for us in the United States because we live in a tolerant, pluralistic society and our constitution protects the right of every human being to believe whatever they want to believe, to follow whatever belief system they want to believe. You really can believe anything in this country. Some people make the assumption that because our, the laws of our country protect, protect every belief, that therefore every belief must be equally true. It's not truth. The Supreme Court has talked about the fact that what we have in, a, in our country is a marketplace of ideas. In other words, truth and falsehood fight it out and free speech says we can say whatever we want to say. That's our country. That's what we do. That's who we are. Just because all religions are equally protected does not mean that all religions are equally true. We can see the differences. The reality is that only Jesus Christ backed up his claims with unique credentials that gave him unique credibility. I want to give you four of these credentials. First, fulfilling prophecies. Jesus validates his claim of being the one and only son of God, the one and only individual in the history of the world to fulfill dozens of ancient prophecies that were written hundreds of years before he was born. When you look at these prophecies, there's no way he could have intentionally fulfilled many of them because so many of them were prophesied beforehand. For example, he could not have arranged the place of his birth. He wasn't even born yet. He could not have arranged his ancestry. One ancient prophecy uh, predicted the exact moment in history when the Messiah would be born, which he fulfilled. He couldn't have arranged how he was put to death. It was predicted hundreds of years before crucifixion was adopted as a method of execution for the Romans. And yet that's exactly what happened. He fulfilled these prophecies. He fulfilled these prophecies against enormous mathematical odds. People have done computer studies and looked at the odds of someone being able to fulfill these prophecies. And they show not just that it would be difficult, not just that it would be unlikely, but that it would be mathematically impossible for any human being to fulfill them. Jesus Christ did. That's one way that his claim to be the son of God is valid. But there's more. 
unprecedented character. He validates his claim by his unprecedented character. So many times, I think your experience is the same as mine. So many times you get to know someone you know, over a period of time. You spend time with them. You, you get to know them. You do life with them. And the more you do, the more you see their shortcomings. The more, the more you see their weaknesses. As Jesus Christ followers spent more time with him, they increasingly marveled at his purity, at his holiness, at his integrity. Nobody was closer to, to Jesus than Peter and John. Listen to what they said about Jesus after spending three years with him. John said, in him is no sin. Can you imagine living with somebody, getting to know them for three years? What would they say about you? And if you ever made any mistakes, Peter said he committed no sin and no deceit was found in him. His unique character validates his claim to be the one and only way to God. Third thing, performing miracles. He validated his claim by performing miracles. Jesus told them, fascinating thing that Jesus did. In John 10, 37, he said, do not believe me unless I do the works of my father. In other words, what he's saying is, is anyone can claim to be the son of God. Anyone can claim to be the Messiah, but unless they do supernatural miracles, don't believe them. They're lying to you. He did perform miracles and, and he did them. He didn't do them off in a dark room in the corner with just a person here and there. He did them out in the open. He did them where lots of people could see what he did, could witness what he did in the broad daylight. He did them in, fr he did them in, in front of skeptics, in front of cynics. You could look in books of, of uh, ancient history that, that people who were the opponents of Christianity, and they all admit, they all say Jesus did the miraculous. His ability to do miraculous further validates him his claim of who he was. And then a fourth thing, death and resurrection. The most spectacular demonstration of his deity. Jesus Christ fulfilled his own prediction. He made the prediction and then he did exactly what it said. He was put to death and three days later, he rose to life. In that, he was seen by more than 500 witnesses. Who else but the Son of God could spend three days in the tomb, dead, come back, resurrect, come back to life, and roam around town and see people, talk to people, and establish that he had returned to life? In Acts 2.22, the Bible says, Jesus of Nazareth was a man whose divine mission was clearly shown to you by the miracles wonders and signs which God did through him. You yourselves know this, for it took place here among you. Those people looked at him and said, we know you're telling the truth. We know this. And on one day, 300 of them turned from their sins, put their trust in Jesus Christ, and the church was born. That's who he was. That's what he did. Christianity is not just a philosophy, it is a reality. Jesus didn't just claim that he's the only way to God, he validated his credentials and he fully established his credibility. Myth number three, Christians are arrogant when they say that Jesus is the only way to heaven. The reality, it's not arrogant to act on the evidence. Christianity isn't being narrow-minded when they say that Jesus is the only way to the Father. You know, for example, I'll give you an analogy. Imagine a friend of yours has their first child. Shortly after the birth, their baby develops jaundice. It's pretty common. Jaundice is a liver disorder that causes the whites of the eyes and, and the skin to turn yellowish. The doctor tells them, this, 
This is a potentially devastating disorder. We need to take action. We need to do something about it. But fortunately, there's an easy cure for it. All you have to do to cure a baby of jaundice is you put that baby under a special light. And that special light treatment, in that the, the baby's skin absorbs the light, it stimulates the liver to function properly. And once it's functioning properly, the, the disorder goes away. Your friend could respond to that by saying, wait a minute, that's too easy. How about we just scrub her with soap? How about we just dip her in bleach? I'm, I'm sure if we just scrubbed her hard enough, the, her skin would, would, would come back to normal. Her skin would look right. The, the doctor would say, no, 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 you, you don't understand. There's only one way to cure jaundice. The parents have replied, well, I don't like this one-way thing. What if we sincerely believe that we don't have to do anything, that in the end, everything is gonna work out, she's gonna be fine. The doctor would say, you're gonna jeopardize the life of your child if you do that. There's only one way to cure jaundice. You're hesitant because it sounds too easy, but just take a moment and look at my credentials here on the wall. I've studied medicine. I've dealt with a lot of babies with jaundice. There is one way to cure jaundice. Look at my credentials. So with that, would anybody accuse those parents of being narrow-minded if they trusted that doctor, the doctor with credentials and credibility, that when he says there's only one way, one cure, one treatment to cure your baby, would, would it be narrow-minded for them to pursue that course of treatment? No, it would be the right course of treatment. It's not arrogant to act on the evidence. The truth of the matter is, we all have a terminal illness called sin. We all have it. The reason that Christians cling to Jesus is because he is the great physician. He's the only one who can cure our condition. We can try to scrub away our sins by doing good works. You could do and do and do, and it's not gonna work out. We could ignore it and just hope that it goes away. That won't work either. We, we could sincerely think that there's got to be another way of dealing with it, but we would be sincerely wrong. The truth is, only the great physician offers the treatment that will erase the stains of your sins. When we turn to Jesus Christ as the one way, it's not being narrow-minded. We're acting based on the evidence. Christianity is unique. It can't be reconciled with any other religion. It backs up its claims with credentials and credibility that no other, no other religion can. That's why when Jesus said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. He was speaking from a heart of love with a desire that all people would accept his offer, offer of truth and life. Do you believe his claim? His claim is specific. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That is a pretty outrageous claim. It's about as outrageous as someone could get. But he backed it up with credentials and with credibility. Have you accepted his offer? If you haven't, you could do that today. You could do that before you leave this campus today. If you have, you should embrace this truth and strengthen your view of the truth with his credibility, with his credentials. And you should live out this truth every day of your life. 
because Jesus is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to come to the Father, you come through Jesus Christ, accepting who he is and what he has done for you. Let's pray. Father, I'm grateful for how you love us, for how you have reached out to us, for how you have shown us love and grace and mercy. I am grateful that, that your son Jesus did not just claim to be your son, but he proved it. He proved it through fulfilling prophecy after prophecy after prophecy that were mathematically impossible to be done. Yet he did. Validating his credibility and his credentials. I pray that we would fully put our trust in Jesus Christ, to trust in him, to cling to him, to rely on him, to embrace him fully. I pray that we would not get confused by other statements or other, other religious views, but that we would cling to the truth that is provable, that is unchangeable, that Jesus Christ is your son, that he claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one could come to you except through him. I pray that we would do that. I pray that we would come to you through your son, Jesus Christ. I pray we would not let that slip away from us. I pray that we would put our life into your hands and trust you with all things of life now and for eternity. I pray that in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.